Okay, I want to talk about Amigle. Amigle has hit the news over the last couple of days due to great concerns around the increasingly popular live video chat website which has seen prepubescent boys um, specifically explicitly touching themselves in front of strangers. Now, I just want to start by saying that actually this app is for 18 plus. However, from the age of 13, with parental consent, users can use this website and app. What it is, is it's a site randomly that connects you to another person. It lets you talk to them on a one to one basis, whether it's audio or through video conversation. You can also appear as anonymous unless you actually decide to share your personal information. Now, what we've seen is actually it's increased in terms of users over the last year. Last January, it saw approximately 34 million visits, whereas in January 2021, it's seen about 65 million users. Now, TikTok has told uh, BBC News that as a result of investigations, it's now decided to ban sharing links to Amigo. Um, and the company says it's for its own safety due to the content that has been seen within the platform, which of course is hugely concerning. Unfortunately, children have been seen to engage in some form of sexual acts within this app. Now, these sorts of apps cause us concern because they help to facilitate abuse. Essentially, children will see quite often adults masturbating and doing things of this nature. And it's completely unexpected. And there are, of course, users much younger than 13 within this website and app because there's no age verification. We know that the Internet Watch Foundation has seen a real increase in the number of reports of self-generated child sexual abuse over the last year. Approximately 68,000 reports um, were tagged whereby the IWF had to take action. And this is really worrying. And this is really worrying because actually children and young people are at risk when they're online. What we need to make sure is they understand the risk so that they aren't engaged in this sort of activity or these types of incidences, because ultimately it's children that we're talking about. And we don't want perpetrators or adults to take advantage and abuse children in this way, nor do we think that they should see such inappropriate content at such a young age. So it's about making sure that Children and young people use devices whereby an adult's present, so they're not locked away within their bedroom. I'm sure you wouldn't let a stranger walk into your child's bedroom. However, sometimes adults allow their children to use their devices within their bedroom, and essentially you're doing the same thing because anybody can have access to your child if they're sat in their bedroom on their phone or their console. On our website, Kids Online Worlds, which I'm scrolling through now, you'll see that we have advice around things to avoid, but also safety tips to consider as to how you can keep children and young people safe, whether it's your child or actually a child or young person that you care for, or even the capacity as a professional. We also provide further support so that you can click on any one of these links and go through to the other relevant agencies that will help to safeguard and keep children and young people safe. Please do check out our website, please subscribe and of course make sure you utilise our resource centre for further information and useful tips for keeping children and young people safe online.